The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start the show like we usually do with the German DAX. As you can see here on the 60-minute chart, we made a nice little butterfly pattern up there on February the 5th. And then we went from 11,400 down to 10,800. That's 300 points, and each point, each 100 points, is worth $2,200. That's a $7,000 move, folks. So that's a big move. And as you can see on the way back up, we bottomed on the 8th. We rallied up, pulled back to a 382 yesterday, and then had a very nice uh, ABCD that is completing up here at the 61% retracement here at 11,190, which is a pretty nice little pattern in itself. If we take a look here at the next one, which is going to be our uh, FTSE, if you'll just give me here one second, and we'll get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. This is also, this is going to be an hourly chart, and you'll be able to see that uh, we completed a Gartley pattern up here at the 78% level with a big gap up, and then you can see we rolled over, went back below the opening price. This is not a a very pretty picture that we see here in the British, uh, in the, the UK market, at least uh, for today. Folks, we are, wake up now. We're going to take a trip. We're going to go far, far away to the foot of the Himalayas up in the, uh, the beautiful country of India. And I want to show you one of our, we have several students uh, over in the, the uh, Hold on here. We'll, hold on just a second. Uh, someone's asking me about the British pound. Uh, I believe it is. Uh, I believe it is. Mr. Z, if you'll give me a second here, I'll bring it up in just a minute, and we'll take a look at it. But let's uh, let's take a look here at this chart from uh, from India. You'll be able to see it pretty nicely. This is a Unilever. It's a um, you know a U.S. stock, but this is uh, what, how it operates over in um, uh, India, and you'll see the beautiful patterns that are there. Uh, beautiful Gartley patterns, ABCDs, uh, just just a really nice way. It just basically shows you these patterns are everywhere in every country. As long as it's liquid and you know and really actively traded, you're not going to have any trouble finding these patterns because they are flat out everywhere. That's uh, the real key. Now you remember that we've been watching one particular uh, market very very closely, and that is the German Bund market. And if you'll take a look what's happened to this, we've seen this on the long-term weekly where it was making the bearish Gartley pattern. And then if you'll notice here, what we've done here over the last uh, three days is we've had a sell-off after the big ABCD that we had up there at that 166.80 level. So that tells us that we're heading down a little bit lower. In our market, in the in our market, the 30-year bond has got some support at that 145.24 level, a lot of resistance up around 147 is what we look like. So we'll be able to see that. Now, the big news, of course, is that it looks like we're not going to go on strike here in the United States. The government's going to stay open, makes the market uh, very, very strong. Uh, we were down, we were trading down around 2702, and then the news came out right before the speeches coming out of El Paso, and the market had a very, very strong rally. If we go above that 2740, folks, uh, that's going to be pretty important. I don't know if we're going to do that. The technical picture says we shouldn't, but they don't always listen to what we have to say here. Yes, we could easily see 2805 do that. Lots of problems there if we get up to that level. So we'll see. We don't joke about these markets. We try to keep you up to date on what we're seeing. Folks, I have questions all the time about the Elliott Wave Theory. Oh, I do want to cover one thing. Remember we were talking about the... Um, natural gas and uh, the importance of what we were looking at in natural gas because we had this big pattern here on the long-term week. Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Give me a little break here. Hold on a second. We'll get this up here and we'll take a look at this. 
you'll see here, this was the uh, long-term weekly chart. We went down, made that triple bottom down there. And then we had the big move uh, yesterday. And let's just take a look at what happened yesterday because it's very interesting because it really gives you a pretty good idea how technically accurate the natural gas contract actually is. You'll notice the bottom that we made here. I just want to bring this up to show you how nice it is technically. But if you'll take a look at this, you'll see that we have a 61% retracement, almost to the exact tick, with an ABCD pattern that occurred yesterday. We had that big gap up where we gapped up from, from 261 all the way up to uh, 267, went all the way to 274. Then we backed off $1,200, and you'll see we stopped with that ABCD pattern right at the exact you know, number. And now look what's happened uh, since early this morning. We'll just bring this up and walk you through it so you can see it. Here it is. You'll see the ABCD pattern there. They filled the gap uh, right to the tick. It filled the top end of that gap. Couldn't You couldn't make this stuff up. That was a perfect 61% retracement. We rallied up, made an ABCD, and it looks like we're heading to uh, that the 271 level. And then if you want to get really creative, if you figure the low was down there at 255, which was that triple bottom, a high up at 274, that's $2,000 down, $1,200 up. $2,000 up is going to take you up to a 22.85 if it gets there. So that would be the big ABCD on the longer term picture. But right now, it has a very bullish bias. We're looking for a high today somewhere around 271 to uh, 279 is what we're looking at potentially here in the natural gas if it can get to that level. So we'll be we'll be watching that down uh, quite a bit. Now, back to the old question about Elliott Wave. This is always interesting because, folks, when we had the trading house up in uh, Pismo Beach, California, it sat on the cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean. It was really a beautiful place. And not only that, but it had five bedrooms, three baths, and the downstairs area had about uh, 1,200 square feet, which we turned into a trading room. We had, uh, at that time, large monitors were the 20-inch ones, <laughs> and we had a couple of those. It was just 20 minutes and I, but we had so many guests in there all the time. Mark Douglas would be in for a month a year. Uh, Bryce Gilmore would stay anywhere from three months to six months. And, gosh, we had so many people come through because Mark was, uh, you know, working on his second book, Trading in the Zone, that he finished in Tucson many years later. But he started working on that book up in uh, Chicago and then also Pismo Beach and just was a really fun place. I know some of you folks have been there and uh, it's bring back the old days, but that's <laughs> that's neither here nor there. But what we want to do now is we want to take a look here uh, at one other thing that uh, and that's that's re related to the Elliott wave. And the reason why I'm, I'm bringing it up is because I am not an Elliott wave counter. Here's here is let's just let's just look at this for a second, folks. Oh, we've got a break coming up here. When we get to the break, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the, um, the Elliott wave. But also, uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to be looking at the British pound for our good friend, Mr. Z. So we'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we're back here, and uh, we're looking at a chart here of the – it's an hourly chart of the crude oil market. As you can see, it goes down. You can see the nice little parallel channels that it's in. You can see the downtrending line. Um, that's basically you know what the market is doing, up, down, sideways. The fact that that trend line is so perfect, you know, matching all the highs – is uh, extremely important because that defines this now as a valid trend line because each time those points occur, they're happening at Fibonacci retracement levels. In other words, it goes down, rallies back to a Fib point, goes down, rallies back to a Fib point, and such and such. Now, if we take this one step further, I'm going to bring this up and show you that once we broke out of that trend line this morning, which was at uh, 52.75, we've had a pretty good rally. We're actually up a dollar a barrel now. I just I just heard the the limit minder go off. So we've moved a dollar off of that trend line. Now, the reason why that is important is when people do Elliott wave counting, they're counting each of those waves. They do the one, two, three, four, five, uh, A, B, C, whatever they want to do that. Now, I don't do that. I'm basically looking at A, B equals C, D. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do when I look at these things. I had a very difficult time uh, studying the Elliott wave because uh, there were so many of these little little smaller waves that they would, sub waves that they would count that I just, I couldn't quite uh, understand that. And I got a, I got by with it without any trouble because I would have a Bob Miner in the room, Glenn Neely, uh, Bryce Gilmore there in Pismo Beach, and they're arguing whether it's a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 12 or a 13, whatever it happened to be. And all I was looking at was a nice opportunity because if I have several numbers coming together at that point, I know that that's what my risk is and I'm able to – you know, uh, react to that. And that's the whole thing. I just saw David White just posted a really great quote from uh, from Jesse Livermore, which I, I really enjoy. And it's one of my favorites because <laughs> because it's talking about uh, about speculation. And it's it's really a, a very good one. It, it's, it, it, to, it, his, this is a quote from Livermore, and it says, to anticipate the market is to gamble. To be patient and wait and react only when the market gives the signal is to speculate. And the speculate is the word uh, comes from Latin, it means speculare, means to observe. There's another great quote in here from my old friend Joe DiNapoli over in Bangkok. 
where the loss of opportunity is preferable to the loss of capital. Ah, there's another way of saying that, too. It's much better to be out of a market wishing you were in than in a market wishing you were out. So that's the key here to remember what we're looking at here on what's going on to uh, some of these things. So anyway, that's what we're paying it very close attention to. We're going to have a special guest uh, hopefully next week from our good friends Rich Anderson and also Cy Monley. We are going to have some of the premier weather experts uh, for the crops in our in our business. These folks are, this is the creme de la creme, folks. And they, I believe we're going to be able to have them on. Rich is uh, working on it. So we'll have them on. They'll share some of the maps and how they derive at some of these uh, forecasts that we're looking at. And we'll be able to see, you know, what we're looking at. We'll take a look here at one of these maps. Uh, this is uh, basically, you'll see that white stuff out there, folks. You want to, you'll have to guess what that is. I'm not actually sure, but it might be snow. Anyway, that's just one of, this happens to be a precipitation map. They have all other kinds, you know, they're related to wind and uh, temperature and, and all the kind of things that they do, but it's very, very scientific, and they're going to share some of it, and because what we're going to be looking at, you know, we've had all these years without any crop failures, and we believe that there's a possibility to this year that there could be. Now, we're just basing that on, you know, the fact that there's been five years in a row without anything bad happening. We haven't seen that before, so we're just saying, well, the probability is such that, you know, it, that could happen, but that's no different than if you have a, you know, a set of dice and you roll the dice and you come up with a six. Well, the odds of, you know, coming up with a six is six to one. And that's going to be no matter if you roll the dice uh, a thousand times, a million times or 10 million times. When you pick up the dice to roll them, the odds of that six coming out is still six to one. It might go 50, it might go 50 rolls before it comes up a six, but it's still, the odds are six to one when you roll it. So it's all about probability and it's all about opportunity. And that's what we're, that's what we're looking at as we, as we go through some of these things, you know, watching them uh, each day. Now the Euro had a, a pretty big run uh, last to the downside last night. We've only rallied back about 40 pips, which was not very much, but let's just look at the U S dollar because this is the one that that we had in our uh, letter last week and it completed a, uh, you'll b believe this when we get this up here we'll be able to see the do US dollar you'll notice that we went up and made that uh, 78 percent level there at the 70 uh, 96 92 level uh, we went a little above it today when the euro got down below uh, 112 uh, 80 we got down to 11260 we held that level relatively well but to me folks, it looks like the euro is getting ready to, you know, take a trip down to Florida. It looks like it wants to go south, in my opinion. It's got a lot of numbers telling us that we want to get down to that 111.40 level in the euro. Now, whether that's going to be happening, you know, very uh, quickly or not, we don't know for sure. But, you know, just look at a time. Now, last night, we had a real interesting pattern that we were alerting our folks to, and that was in the gold market. We take a look at this in the gold. This is a just a 15-minute chart over Monday, Sunday, Monday, and into Tuesday. You'll notice that we were looking for that high to come in there at 1317. The high was 131750, and now you know we backed off about three, three, four dollars from that level, and so we're going to see what the next correction is going to be in the gold. Now I put that 15-minute gold chart up because you can trade gold without risking very much if you're looking at these smaller time frames. If you're trading it on an hourly or if you're trading it on a four-day, four-hour chart or a daily, you're probably going to have to risk more. But if you're watching it on a half-hour chart or a 15-minute chart, you can certainly reduce your risk down to something that we think is relatively uh, important. Oh, there's another quote here from David. David, you're the best, man. I don't know how you have time to read all this stuff, but this is from my my old buddy, classmate from Cambridge, Winston Churchill. Winston and I went to school together, you know, back in the 20s and 30s there in London. Success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. And uh, there's a lot of quotes about success and luck and all that stuff. Luck is where preparation meets opportunity. Luck is where inspiration meets perspiration. I think that was Henry Ford, but uh, there's so many of them, you can't, uh, you can't do them all. So pay uh, relatively close attention. Someone's asking a question about the, uh, the Indian stock thing that I sent. If I look at those from Asia, yes, I do look at uh, Asian stocks when requested. I do not look at stocks 
uh, unless the, someone gives me a request, and then I will take a look at it, whether it's Intel or any of the others. I will not do anything with that until uh, we'll be able to see, you know, unless there's an absolute request, you know, for it, then I will be able to, you know, try to answer. Because I've seen all the patterns. It's just a question of, you know, looking at them. And as long as you've got a, a market that's that's uh, has the public involved in it, these patterns are going to be there, folks. They have to be because that's all the market can do. If you remember yesterday, folks, we focused on the hog market. That was one of the things we wanted to be looking at. And we'll bring this up so you can take a quick look at it here. But if you remember, we were watching February hogs go off the board and it said they should be bottoming. Well, lo and behold, guess what happened? June hogs and April hogs made a lower low by one tick and immediately rallied $800. 877 927-6648. Wow. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter on the line. Stan, are you there? Good morning, Larry. Yes, I am, live and well from Phoenix, Arizona. I know. Warm, what are you, about 28 degrees there in the low this morning or something? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think it hit about 37 or so here. Oh, yeah, it was 28 this morning. Stan, uh, one of the things I'd like to do is, you know, your your work uh, uh, on the shorter-term cycle is fabulous, and the longer stuff is is as good, and that's why you're one of the best timers that we see here. But in one of the charts that you bring up in your newsletter is the, uh, the longer-term um, 
uh, cycle that you look at, which I think is is really uh, where you bring in the regression analysis and stuff. This is the one that goes back over the, the whole past year. And my goodness, those highs and lows, I posted them in there. The, they've just been absolutely uh, spot on. You want to, you want to explain to the folks what that regression analysis means and how you come up with this? If you can, I mean, if it's proprietary, then we, we can't do that. But if you're able to share it, that would be great. Oh, oh, absolutely. Uh, I do a lot of things uh, from a technical perspective, but in particular, I do a lot of uh, statistical analysis. Uh -huh. And when I'm examining a cyclical pattern, uh, I will look at highs and lows that have occurred in the past. And then I attempt to model it mathematically using uh, Fibonacci ratios. And to find the best fit, a lot of people will just use a, a pencil and ruler. But when you get down to brass tacks, you, you need to do it correctly, mathematically. And so what I do is I find the highs and lows, find the ratios that seem to fit visually, and then I assess it mathematically using statistical analysis or regression analysis. Wow. And that tells me uh, whether or not the highs and lows I've picked and the ratios uh, in, in fact do pan out and, and whether or not they're valid. And, and then also it computes a standard deviation. So when I take this information, projected into the future, people will ask, well, what's the what's the the variance you're expected about the next turn? If you're saying there's going to be a higher low in the future, is it plus or minus two days, four days, 10 days? What is it? Well, I can answer that question mathematically by looking at all the prior highs and lows and assessing what the standard deviation is. And that tells me uh, yeah. the variance to, to, to anticipate about the next, uh, the next turn. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. From a broad market perspective, perspective, uh, Larry, I think uh, the stock market, uh, I think uh, my theme is the bull market express rocks on. Uh, okay. At the, at the December bottom, uh, we had just a plethora of Fibonacci counts that define that bottom. For example, we were 144 weeks from the February 2016 bottom, 377 weeks from the October 2011 bottom. Those are Fibonacci numbers and a, and a very important Lucas number 521 from the March 2009 uh, bottom. Uh -huh. So uh, you put all that together and I think uh, we have all the makings of, of a major bottom there in December and we are in the process of powering higher. Well, it's certainly powering higher today with the fact that it looks like we're not gonna have the government go on strike, which is a good thing, I believe. Uh, Stan, one of our listeners is asking us about Lucas numbers. You wanna tell, tell the folks, I don't use those. I, I, I looked at them at one time. You wanna tell the folks what Lucas numbers are? Uh, Lucas numbers are related to Fibonacci numbers by a factor of 1.382. So if you uh, take all the Fib numbers, multiply by 1.382, you'll get the Lucas series, and that's all it is. Wow. Uh, I kind of I kind of lump them all together. They are all. Oh, and, and by the way, Mr. Fibonacci, and that wasn't his real name. Uh, his real name was Leonardo Pisa. Uh, but a fellow named, uh, a French mathematician named Edward Lucas had uh, coined that term in the mid-1800s, and it kind of stuck. So uh, uh, we now call uh, uh, Leonardo Fibonacci, was not his real name, but he, yeah. gets, uh, he gets tagged with it. Not only does he get tagged with the numerical counts, but also the ratios, which, by the way, I don't think he even knew. Nevertheless, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> history's been rewritten. But I use... Uh, uh, Fib numbers. I use Lucas numbers in my, in my analysis, and they all work. Uh, okay. W when I say they work, you, you you use them to forecast potential turns in the future, and then have to use a number of indicators that measure uh, either price velocity or yeah. price range to confirm. Yeah. On uh, many years ago, about twelve years ago, I went to uh, Pisa, Italy, to see the uh, you know the the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and that's where you know Fibonacci was born. He didn't have anything to do with those uh, towers because they were built long before uh, he was born. But there is a Fibonacci Boulevard there, <laughs> and uh, which is uh, rather fun. But you know, it's really strange because these uh, this big uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa is held up by cables, uh, because the the ground underneath, you know, had several earthquakes over the years, and the ground softened up, and so they have these giant cables that keep it from uh, falling over. That's why you see the Leaning Tower of Pisa is being held up by cables. It's uh, it's just not, and it, it's not safe to even walk through it anymore. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, it's pretty little, pretty little bit dangerous, but. Uh, 
that's neither here nor there. Stan, what's that, your feeling? Excuse me. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say with that chart you have up on the screen, what I've done there, by the way, is I've looked at the S&P 500 going back the last year, uh -huh. and I've modeled that mathematically using what's called regression analysis uh, with the beginning point, the uh -huh. high on January the 26th. And then each of those turning points, I've marked 0 0.236, 0 0.382, yeah. the September high, 0 0.618, the December low, 0 0.854. They all suggest, when I do the computations, that we should get a turn in the vicinity of February the 22nd. Um, okay. Uh, we've come up uh, rather swiftly off the December lows. Uh, I think there's a possibility we could chop sideways uh, for the next uh, maybe seven, eight trading days, uh, maybe make a, a, a low, and I use that term very carefully when I say low, it might be the apex of a sideways structure <laughs> towards the end of next week, somewhere around Feb 22nd. Uh, but I think uh, I think the betting man, whether you're betting dice uh, and, and, and the number six coming out six to one, as you discussed <laughs> earlier, I think the betting man would be betting on higher prices and use pullbacks to add to long positions. Mm -hmm. That's how I play in this thing. Wow, that's really interesting. Hey, you're, you've been bullish bonds for quite some time. You still think the bonds are moving higher? I do. I think uh, we saw an important low uh, back several weeks ago in, in the bonds and the tracking ETF, which is the TLT. Uh, and I think uh, uh, it's going to take some time. It might take a couple of years, but I think you're going to see bonds at new all-time highs, and you're going to see interest rates uh, at new lows. Uh, wow. Both both equities and bonds are in a secular bull market. And I think it has about another, oh, I think about another four years to run before this thing runs out of juice. Uh, oh. But yeah, uh, we're going to see lower, yes, lower, not higher interest rates. Wow, uh, that's interesting. Judgment. Yes, indeed. One I'll more question. One oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Stan. You're, you got the mic. They well, want to hear you. They hear me all day long. They like to hear you. Yeah. So go ahead. Well, one of the things that, that I use in evaluating whether or not we're in a bull market or bear market is this concept of translation. And you and I have discussed this on the air in the past. Yes. Uh, if you look at a dominant cycle uh, and look for evidence of either left or right translation, that will give you clues as to whether or not we're in a bear market environment or a bull market environment. The dominant cycle on the daily charts is about 40 trading days, uh, Larry. That yeah. expands and contracts over the long haul, but uh, it's right at about 40 trading days, and the midpoint of that is at 20. If you look at a daily chart of the S&P, uh, I, I, hear, I hear the music. Maybe we should pick yeah, this up. Stay, you please pick it up when we come back from the break. Stan Harley is Harley Stock Market Letter. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank, and get the type of interest they receive. Instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot range from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. 
Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We were talking with Stan Harley about left translation and right translation. And I believe right translation is when the cycle crests on the right side of the cycle and left translations when it crests on the left side of the cycle, and that is the more bearish one? That's exactly correct. Uh, uh, right translation means the crest or the high point in price occurs to the right of the midpoint of the cycle. That's indicative of bull market structure. And in left translation, you have the same uh -huh. trough to trough cyclical schedule, but the crest or the, the peak of the cycle occurs to the uh -huh. left of the midpoint. For example, uh, uh, between the... Uh, October 29th low and the December 26th low, that time period spanned 39 trading days. That's the 40-day cycle I discussed. Uh, the crest occurred in the first half of that cycle at the at the alpha sub-cycle point, as I, I refer to it. That was higher okay. than the, the, the subsequent one. That's left translation. That's indicative of a market uh, destined to move lower, which it did. Ah, okay. But now, off the December lows, you can see that the February 5th high on the S&P was higher than the January 25th high. Ergo, uh -huh. right translation equals bull market structure. We're in a bull market. Yeah, they sure are. Uh, we have one, one last question, Stan, and then we'll let you go. And that's one of our folks up in Washington, the state of Washington, sitting in there with about eight inches of snow this morning. Marshall would like to know, how do you know that that 1.00 that you're showing on that chart is not going to be a high or a low? The, on the with the regression analysis, uh, I don't know just from doing the regression analysis. What that does is it suggests the potential for a turn in the okay. February 26 time period, and the standard okay. deviation on that projection is about 2.3 trading days. Uh, okay, I have to use other tools, measure price velocity, price range, okay. indicators like that that give me an assessment of overbought, oversold. Oh, that's great. Hey, Stan, I want to thank you for, uh, oh, by the way, uh, we were talking about that book, uh, you and I, about that uh, torque analysis. Torque analysis, uh, yes. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. That was one of the hardest reads I've ever seen because that guy was uh, an engineer, and boy, he wrote like an engineer, <laughs> but uh, he had some good Fibonacci <laughs> stuff in it. So anyway, I want to thank you for uh, for being with us today. We'll have you on again, and we'll certainly be watching that date in uh, late February to see what happens. But uh, you're a real gentleman for listening to uh, – you're bringing us on so we can hear your words of wisdom. So we really want to thank you a lot. That that helps us a great deal. Well, thank you, Larry. My pleasure. Uh, the Dow's up about 233 right now. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be up 333 in a few minutes. <laughs> hey, listen, thanks we for should, joining us. Should. My pleasure. You bet. Okay, thank you very much. It's Stan Harley, folks, of the Harley Stock Market Letter. You just go to www.harleystockmarketletter, and you'll be able to, to take a look at it. And if you're really nice and mention TFNN, he might even send you a copy so that you could take a look at it yourself. He's a pretty smart dude. Uh, we're looking at some of these markets that are pretty big here. As you can see here with the uh, 
Uh, the S&P here will bring this up here because we watched this several times when we got up to this uh, 27.38 level, which was pretty strong resistance. We were trading at 27.02 yesterday until the, uh, they came out with the possibility of seeing this uh, government not shut down. That's what really pushed the, mar pushed the market up. We, we saw some strength coming out of China because China had been closed for two days in a row, and it was catching up with the rest of the world, as was as was the Hong Kong market. So these are going to be really interesting to see what's happening. Yes, Maria, that 2732 is a spot on ABCD on the smaller term time frame, and we'll see. Uh, I don't know. I, I talked to DJT uh, early this morning, but we were just basically talking about the, uh, the weather in Washington, D.C. Uh, Donald and I really didn't get into the markets very much or what's going on, whether he's going to sign the bill or not. I'll call him right after the show here and see if he'll give me an update of whether he's going to sign the bill or not. Folks, you got to stop watching the TV. It'll drive you nuts. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for if it weren't for if it weren't for Donald Trump, they, we wouldn't have television. All they would be talking about is the weather and the occasional, you know, uh, drive-by shooting or whatever it is. So let's remember that that stuff is uh, is what they uh, what they peddle to us. So we'll see what's going on. Uh, what he's saying, uh, Jose, is uh, what Stan was saying is there's going to be a turning date around February 26. He doesn't know whether it's going to be a high or low or not. But he's put his numbers together going back over the past year. And with the highest probability means on the 22nd of February, there's going to be something really interesting. But we have we have some information from Stan, and that means we have a moon node at that time, the 26th. We have the full moon. We have a big super full moon coming in on the 19th. That's day after President's Day. And, of course, we're going to have as our guest, I believe that day is going to be our – our resident astrologer, one of the four or five that we use here, Norman, who calls it to the minute, Winsky, will be on that day, and that'll be a really interesting day, that super full moon. We have uh, some really interesting aspects occurring all at that time, so that'll be something really cool to uh, pay attention to. So we'll see what uh, what's going to happen. Yes, Steve, you're right. We got one other uh, objective up there at 2743. They can go through these with the emotionalism that we have going in some of these markets. It can go through those numbers like they don't even exist. So that's why you want to be using a stop whenever you're trading these, because if you don't use a stop, you're telling Mr. Market, I know more than you do. And Mr. Market will bring that man and with a big sickle that he carries around in his knapsack, and the man will jump out with that big sickle and cut you off at the knees to remind you that uh, you don't know where that market's going. The only thing you can do is protect yourself by using a stop because you can only do one thing in the risk-reward equation, and that is you can worry about what the risk is. You never know whether you're going to be right or wrong, and you never know what the reward's going to be, but you do know what the risk is, and that's what you have to focus on. Focusing on the risk will keep you alive and well in this game, and it'll pay big bucks down the road. That's uh, the main thing that you want to keep in mind as you're looking at some of this. Regarding the U.S. dollar, yes, we've made these big patterns up here at the 97 level, but uh, it's got to go popping through there. That means the euro's got to get below that 112 level. Or it's going it's going to have a lot of trouble at 11220, folks, because at 11220, you know, there's a, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of numbers. Just just take a look at this here on the euro. This is a real interesting chart because this is something that we think is going to happen. We got as low as 11260. I think we're trading 11290, maybe a little higher than that right now. But the but the ABCD structure on this takes you to 112. Uh, 25 and go back and look where we were in November, 112.25. And so that's nothing more than it. That's going to be a double bottom most probably. And uh, when we get below that 112.70, and so far we got to 112.65, we close below 112.70. That turns that U.S. dollar really bullish, and that means it'll be popping out to the upside. And, and we're seeing some of these markets have some pretty big moves. And uh, that'll just be the beginning of it because if you break above that, 98 level in the U.S. dollar index, you're breaking something out on that, that dollar index chart that is extremely bullish. I mean, that's going to break the head and shoulders pattern, and it's going to, you know, make these cycles look like they want to move far, far to the right. And as Stan Harley said, is when they, quest, when they crest near the right side 
of the cycle, that's high translation and that's very, very bullish. So keep in mind, let's look at this one last time because it's worth it's worth paying attention to and that's this US dollar index and we'll get back from the break. We'll discuss it one more time and then we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. The universe provides us with opportunities all the time, and I was no different. In 2006, I invested $2,500 in a two-day master trader course taught by Tom O'Brien, then ranked as the number one market timer for gold. The fact is, if you want to be the best, you must learn from the best. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability and the Market Timer of the Year for 2018. To celebrate this accomplishment, TFNN.com is offering you a free two-week subscription to my award-winning new newsletter service and there's no charge to you until day 15 unless you cancel sooner that's right we're waiving the normal upfront deposit and this offer is available to anyone and everyone even if you've tried mastering probability before sign up now and i'll teach you the tool that identified the bottom in the dow on january 26 the morning that led to the largest daily point gain in history this offer will expire on february 10th so go to the homepage of tfnn.com now and click on mastering probability if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, we talked about that long-term weekly chart in the euro. Uh, or the dollar index, we get above 98, this thing's going to really go. It means the euro is going to be heading down to our long-term price target, which is 106. But that's still a long way. If we take a look here at this gold market, this is what we're looking at this morning around 317 is a short. We got up to 318.20. We're now trading at 313.70. Uh, that's your first profit objective because you've covered what your original risk was. So if you happen to do that, you just put your stop at break even now which would be 1317 and let the see if the trading gods will let it move down to the next profit objective which is down around 1310 if we measure the ABCD pattern on this folks from the high on Friday which was 1319 down to 1307, dropped 12 dollars, rallied back 10, and then back down. You subtract 10 from 1318, and guess what you get, boys and girls? You get that magical number that we've been waiting for in this gold for quite some time, and that number comes in at. You're gonna be ready. Are you ready? Here it comes. Judges ruling. <laughs> 
Here it is. You you got it right. It's 1299 to 1298. Watch that in the gold. That's going to be incredibly important. We go through there with any gusto. If we get down below 1292 instead of stopping at 1298, that'll tell us that that high we made on the 78% level in the gold at uh, 1332 is extremely important. Well, we already know it's important because it was a 78% level. The fact that we can't get above it, if that happens, then that'll tell us something more about it. So we'll see if that is going to be uh, that is going to be the case. So pay close attention to the gold. It's an interesting one, and with the euro moving like it is, it could really be very very interesting. All right, I think that's the old clock on the wall. We'll see you folks on the flip side tomorrow, and live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!